In these problems, we're being asked to evaluate the exact values of some trigonometric functions. For example, in this first one, we need to find the sine of pi. What is that exactly? Well, to do that, you use the unit circle. And you can find an image of this on the internet in many places. Uh, once you use it enough, you'll probably start to memorize it. And the way it works is this. On this one, along the inside, we've got these radian measures, pi over 6, pi over 2, pi, all the way back to the start is 2 pi. And also the angle measures that go along with them, 30, 90, 180, 360. And then for each of those points, we also have the x and y coordinates on the unit circle. And the x coordinates are, give you the value for cosine. The y coordinates give you the value for sine. So that's how we're going to find these exact values. So when it says evaluate the sine of pi, we're just going to go around the circle till we get to pi right there and look at the y value of the coordinate. And the y value is 0. So the sine of pi is exactly 0. Let's try another one. This one says evaluate the cosine of 3 fourths pi. So again, we're going to look back at our unit circle here and find 3 fourths pi. And right there, 135 degrees is 3 fourths pi. And since we want to find the cosine, we're looking at the x value there. And that's negative square root of 2 over 2. So this is just negative square root of 2 over 2. That's the exact value of the cosine of 3 fourths pi. They get a little harder. Let's look at this one. It says to evaluate the tangent of negative 121 pi over 4. And we've got a few things going on here. First of all, tangent is not on the unit circle. But tangent is sine over cosine. And we can get those values from the x and y coordinates on the unit circle. So we can figure out tangent if we get the sine and the cosine. The other thing we've got going on here is we've got a negative number. And all that means is that instead of going around the circle this way, we're going to go around the circle this way. And then the other thing is we've got this huge number, 121 pi over 4. Well, that would send us around and around the circle more than once. So the way to think about this, all the way around the circle is 2 pi. Let's see if we can separate out a bunch of um, 2 pi's here. And I think I'm going to rewrite this as negative 120 pi over 4. And that equals 30 pi, negative 30 pi, minus 1 pi over 4. So if I think about it that way, what happens is I start at 0. I go around this way. This is negative. I go around once. I get to 2 pi. I do that. 14 more times, and I've gotten to 30 pi, and I'm still back where I started. Now all that's left is the negative 1 fourth pi, and I go to 7 pi over 4, because that's the same thing as pi over 4, but in a negative direction. If I go to positive pi over 4, it's up here. Negative pi over 4, whoops, right here at 7 pi over 4. And that's where I'm going to find my values. Now here they are. The tangent, remember, is what we're trying to find. So it's the cosine Sorry, it's the sine over the cosine. So we would have a negative square root of 2 over 2 over positive square root of 2 over 2. One thing that you should notice here is that these values are the same, except there's one of them is negative. If you have the same value over itself, you're going to get 1. So this actually comes out to be a negative 1. A lot of work there for a pretty simple answer. All right, let's do one more. This one says to evaluate the secant of 29 pi over 6. And the secant is 1 over the cosine. So we're going to find the cosine and then take the reciprocal of it. First, I'm going to separate this into two chunks, one with a bunch of two pi's in it and one of what's left over. And I think the best way to do that is to rewrite this as 24 pi over 6. That would equal 4 pi. That's twice around the circle, plus 5 pi over 6. Now this is a positive number, so we're going in a positive direction. So there's once around, there's twice around. I'm at 4 pi. Now I need to go 5 pi over 6 more. That ends me up right here. And I'm looking for the secant, which is 1 over the cosine. So let's take the cosine value. It's negative square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine equals negative square root of 3 over 2. So the secant then equals 2 negative over the square root of 3. But we usually don't like radicals in the denominator, so we'll multiply by square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and we get negative 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. And that is our exact value.
for the secant of 29 pi over 6. So that's a little bit of work with using the unit circle to find exact values of trigonometric functions.